Hi, I'm Brian, Service Manager at Whole Latte Love. This week on Cribs, I'm taking you through the Profitech Pro 700. I love it, Brian. Let's go in. Come on in. All right, so we're going to start at the back here, uh, right in where the water it gets introduced to the system. So if you look back here, you got your water supply connection right there if you have the machine plumbed in. Right next to it, you have your selector valve that's going to decide if you're running off of the plumbing or off of your reservoir. So here's your counterintuitive valve. If it's pointing over here, you'd think it's for the plumbing. It's not. That's for the water tank. So pointing towards here, tank, over here, that's your water connection. All right. All right. So we're going to start off saying we're on reservoir. So here is your reservoir. A uh, couple components here. That is your reservoir valve, spring-loaded with a little ball bearing in there. That's why they don't leak. Yep. Uh, and then you got your float magnet right there. Uh, that's what correlates with your sensor. Is on the side of or on the face of your uh, reservoir holder. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll call this guy, reservoir holder. And now you undid that. That's yep. normally. Yeah. Yeah. This is not normally uh, floating around in there. Sure. There's two screws that go through the bottom of the machine to hold this on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so on the bottom here, this is the socket. Uh, you'll see two connections here. This one has just a blind cap on it. Uh, some machines have a return that comes to that point, but not on this machine. And right off of there, you have an inline particle filter, which catches any loose debris that may be inside of your uh, reservoir. Mm -hmm. okay. And swing around the back here, this is the back side of your sensor. So if you ever needed to replace it, a couple bolts there that hold it on and your wiring connections for the sensor that go to ground and board. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's move on. We got your braided hose line coming here off of the selector valve going sort of, into your rotary vein pump. Sort of following the water path here as we go, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. So here's the rotary vein pump. Um, I'm going to show you on the bottom of the machine. Mm -hmm. We got, don't slide. Yep. Right here, that's the adjustment for the pump. So you'd set your brew pressure there for the most part. Exactly. All right. Okay, so water makes it through the pump and come to this T right here. Uh, got two directions to go. Right here is your capillary tube that goes to the, uh, uh, the pressure gauge for your brew pressure. Uh, and that's going to be reading just the in incoming line pressure and the pressure coming off of the pump. Right here is another braided hose. It's going to this entire section right here, we're going to call the valve tree. Um, so it branches off in two different directions. One goes to your service boiler and one goes to your brew boiler. So we're going to go to the brew boiler first. Brew boiler line comes straight through this T section here. Up this way, this is a non-return or one-way valve, so water can go this way, but not this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and we got another T right here. Right up here is your overpressure valve. Uh, you may notice a difference depending on the uh, age of your machine, the difference in styles. They have made a change recently to this style. It's a 14-bar uh, overpressure valve, and this is non-adjustable. On the previous style, it was uh, a little bit thicker and had a flat top with a set screw on the top of it, and that screw you could use to adjust the pressure. Mm -hmm. um, that's not usually something that we recommend since you adjust the pressure in the system using your pump, not this, so they just stuck with this style instead. Um, that sort of acts as a safety valve on the brew boiler, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's the maximum occupancy of the <laughs> pressure. So once you hit 14 bar on here, that's going to vent the pressure out through these tubes here. And you'll see you got three tubes here, one off of your overpressure valve, one off the vacuum relief, which we'll talk about later and one going down to the discharge spout on the front of the machine. They all meet here at this plastic T. That discharge just goes in your drip tray. Yep. Yeah. All right. So back this way. So we got that T. This direction comes up to this copper pipe, comes to this elbow, and that's the inlet to your brew boiler. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now over here we have your stats. 
uh, one for your load and one for your neutral. We have your NTC probe, which is the temperature probe, which communicates with your PID, which is located down here. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is the high end of your uh, uh, brew group. So your hot water comes out of the boiler this way and into the brew group. And the colder water will come back out through this tube down here. That's going to go back down in the bottom of the boiler? Yep. And that water will cycle through, and that's what creates the uh, temperature stability in your group, group head. So there's water constantly flowing out to the group head all the time once the machine's warmed up, right? Exactly. All right. Okay. All right, so now I'll move this out of the way so we have a nice view. Uh, come back through the valve tree. If we came up this end of the T, you'll run into a solenoid right here. Uh, this uh, magnetic solenoid valve uh, activates whenever the boiler, steam boiler is calling for water. Uh, solenoid and a pump will activate to fill it up. On top of the solenoid, you have another non-return valve. Mm -hmm. And then above that, it's a copper line for the inlet to your service boiler. Okay. Next to that, we have your uh, security valve. Uh, so this, on a newer machine, is going to be two and a half bar. Uh, Pre-2018-ish, you're going to have a two bar. It depends on whether or not you've also updated your machine to have the, uh, the higher steam pressure profile, which would be a replacement of this as well as an updated PID. Mm -hmm. okay. Next to that, we've got a, another capillary tube, this one going to the other pressure gauge. That reads the pressure that's inside of your service boiler. On this side, we've got your level probe. So this is what communicates with the circuit to say whether or not you need water. Uh, if I had the machine plugged in right now and pulled that off, it would automatically just start filling. So that's just a metal piece of metal, kind of like this, they would just stick down into the boiler, and that's what helps sense the water. That's why you need some minerals in your water, because it uses conduct conductivity, right? Exactly. Yep. That. Okay. Okay. Now, over here, we have more of our high limits. Again, load, neutral. Um, and point out before, see the little black caps in the middle there? Yep. So these are resettable, so if this were to trip, you could actually press down on that, uh, you'll feel a little tactile click, mm -hmm. and that's how you know that you've reset it. They're like little circuit breakers in there. Exactly. Okay. okay. And popping into the middle, we have another NTC probe. This one for, obviously, the steam boiler. And behind that, this is the vacuum relief. Uh, this is what vents the pressure as the system is heating up. So you'll often hear a little hissing sound and see a little bit of steam coming from the front of the discharge when the machine's first heating up. That's this guy activating. And next to that, we have the line going to your steam tap. Comes off the top, surprise. Comes on, <laughs> yep, yeah, there's surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> and then way down at the bottom, there's another line. This is a tricky one to see. It's way back. I can even aim my tool right there. We go right there. That's the line coming off for your hot water tap. I don't know if you guys got that. Yeah. There. yeah. Very hard to see. Yeah, it's back there it somewhere. Is back there. We promise. <laughs> and, uh, that ends up over there. Yeah. So okay. that's right up there. Um, if you look straight down in here, this is your brew switch. That's when you lift your lever. Activates the switch in there, which communicates to the board to activate your pump. Okay. Okay. Um, we did briefly show you over here. This is where your PID is. Um, you got wires coming off the PID going to your NTC probes as well as some other electronics on the other side. I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, over here, a little bit more on the pump here. We've got, so this is the pump. This giant uh, silver part here is the pump motor. And this guy right here is the start capacitor for the motor. Just stores up some energy to give that yep. motor a little kick to get her going, right? A little kick in the bum, get going <laughs> the pump. All right, so and back here is going to 
kind of move things away a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you've got your two LEDs. You've got a green LED and an orange LED down here. Uh, pretty simple. Just little plugs in the back there. And your main power switch in between the two of them. Okay. Okay. And there the other side. Coming to the other side here. We'll come around here. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. On this side, this is uh, sort of the brains of the operation right here. This is your main control board. To the left of it, you have your uh, DC supply that supplies the energy for your PID to operate. Mm -hmm. And then above that, you will see two relays. One for your steam boiler, it's the front one there, and this back one is for your brew boiler. And these ones have the little lights on them? They do, yep. yep. Uh, you see right there's a little orange lamp that will light up when it is getting power supplied to it. Okay. okay. And one more thing I didn't mention, on the bottom of both your boilers, obviously we got to heat them up mm -hmm. somehow. Mm -hmm. So, I'll show you on this side here. Uh, this is your heating element right here. Uh, there are three bolts, one there, one there, and one on the back side over there uh, that hold it together. There's a little silicone seal in there. Um, and on the newer models, you will have this uh, drainage tap right here. This is a three millimeter screw for a plug right there. You take that off. Turn that valve, and you can drain your pump or your uh, boiler from right there. And there's a drain in the steam boiler as well, right? Accessible from underneath. There mm -hmm. is, yes. Um, again, okay. with a little bit tricky to see, mm -hmm. but it's where are you? Way over there. So if you take so, off a panel on the bottom frame, you can get yep, it there. Yep. Right? I'll show you that right now. You got. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so these four screws right here, three millimeter again, noticing a trend. Mm -hmm. uh, take that off, and that's how you can easily access the heating element for the steam boiler as well as that drain plug. Um, the only thing with taking that plug out is uh, there is an O-ring in there, uh, but that can get worn out kind of easily. So when you're, if you're doing that, you're going to want to replace that O-ring or add a little sealant or be super safe and do a little bit of both. And while we're under here, I notice we, I notice we have the uh, wing nut on there because this is a machine fairly fresh out of the box. Yes, indeed. And what's that all about? Huh? So that is actually holding the uh, pump down a little bit. It's compressing the, uh, the, the mounts for the pump. The mm -hmm. uh, idea is it holds it so it doesn't rock around in shipping. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see that this pump is angled, instead of being level, it's kind of down like that, and that's because that nut is bringing the whole thing down. And that's to prevent the whole thing from just kind of flying forward during shipping and possibly damaging any of these connections here. Okay. Okay. So when you, when you get your machine, or if you have a machine, you got that nut on there, take it off. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, you're not going to do any damage having it on there still, but it definitely makes your machine a little bit quieter when you get that off. Right, okay. So, I think that's about all there is for the major components on here. Yeah, I mean, everything up front, that's pretty obvious. We got our group and, yep. and yep. all that got, stuff. But uh, Got your taps, got your PID, both of your gauges. Oh, the, group switch, head. the switches here. Let's just talk about those. Oh, yeah, quick. yeah, definitely. So, yeah, a couple select and selection switches here. So, if you are running your machine off of, uh, if it's plumbed in, you're going to want it switched over this way, see the little faucet there. Yeah. Or if you switch it over this way, that's how you're running off of your reservoir. It really and just turns off that sensor, right? Yep, that's all that yeah. switch does is it just kind of tricks out the sensor, sensor so that yeah, you right. don't have to keep water in there mm -hmm. when you're not using it. And this one is to turn on and off the steam boiler. So you could run this off of just your brew boiler or both of them, depending mm -hmm. on which selection you make. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Brian, thanks for taking us on a tour of the components inside of the Profitech Pro 700. My pleasure.